There it goes, now it's flowing. Whoa, it's gonna go too fast. Oh boy. Oh sh Hey, what's up y'all? I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for coming back for yet another week. So listen, it's been a little while since I put out a video. Uh, I don't even know when I'm gonna get this one out. I'm hoping Monday night at least. Uh, today is Sunday when I'm filming this and I've got so many things to talk about. Really a lot of updates for you and then a pre-announcement. As far as updates go, I've got an update to the fungicide guide now. I've been putting out a fungicide guide the last couple years, but this year I completely revamped it, completely rewrote it. Everybody already knows about my bulletproof strategy. So in this year's guide, I actually talked about specific lawn diseases, ones that I'm actually seeing right now in my private groups, as well as a few others that I know are gonna come up here now that we're kind of transitioning into this late spring spring, early summer kind of pattern. I mean, some of you guys around the country, you had snow just a little over a week ago. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna get that summer pattern. It's gonna whack you really hard and that disease triangle is gonna come together and you're gonna be wondering what's going on when you see some brown spots in the lawn. So what I did is I completely rewrote the fungicide guide talking about some of the most common diseases, including ones that cool season lawns are seeing right now, red thread. And some people think it's dollar spot. Even some of it could be spring dieback, which is natural when you seed it a little too heavy last year. And then I'm also gonna talk a lot about brown patch and large patch which are going to affect mostly turf type tall fescue and then down here we call it large patch St. Augustine and Zoysia. Now instead of doing a video about that because it would be like an hour long and I already get enough comments of people telling me to quit the fluff and get to the point so I figured what I would do instead is write it in a free guide. So if you click the link in the description below you sign up for my email we'll go ahead and send you out that guide as well as the pre-emergent guide, the weed control guide, the grub guide. All of these are free to you when you sign up but the one that you're mostly going to want is the fungus guide, the disease guide. I think I've been calling it the fungicide guide but it's about diseases, lawn diseases. That's the one that'll be sent to you free and it's an immediate download. Now, for any of you who are already on the email list, just check your inbox on Tuesday morning and we'll send it to you so you get that guide as well. And trust me, when you read that guide, you'll be like, wow, that's a lot of good information. And so that's why I'm not really putting out what I would call a real tips video this week. I actually spent most of my time on that guide and then something else. So coming this Thursday night, well, I'm hoping this Thursday night, it might actually be Friday, but probably this Thursday night, definitely in time for the Memorial Day weekend, I have the very biggest announcement I have ever made on this channel. And as far as I'm concerned, it's the biggest new thing to hit the lawn care community since the lawn care community was formed. Pretty dramatic, right? I mean, when was the lawn care community formed? I don't know, like 10 years ago, but anyway, it's something that me and my team have been working on night and day for a long time now. And in fact, my team has actually over delivered, especially in the last few weeks, just some of the things that they're bringing to what we're gonna announce. I just never thought would ever happen. It's just become bigger and better than I ever thought it could. Now I've been putting in work on this too. The announcement for Thursday night, I had to actually make a couple dozen videos for this thing that we're gonna announce. That's right, a couple dozen. And actually I have a couple dozen more that I'm gonna have to make almost right away to keep this thing going. Now some of you that really pay attention and keep up and you bottom readers of the email, you probably know what I'm talking about, but really you've only seen this much of it. It's got so much more that we're gonna roll out Thursday night maybe Friday morning, but for sure. And the thing about it is, everything that I'm talking about here is gonna be 100% free to all of you. So that's all I'm gonna say about that now because what I really need to do is get out here and enjoy the mow. And I'm actually gonna break out an old friend that I haven't used, and I think it's been at least two years, maybe even three years since I've used this particular lawn mower. I actually cleaned the garage, believe it or not. There she is. Look at that, the 22 inch Toro Recycler Smart Stove over by there. So this thing has been packed away in the garage, hidden for a long time because I had so many other mowers, but I thought when I broke it out last week, by the way, if you haven't seen my video on how to choose a lawnmower, you ought to check it out. I really think it'll be helpful to anybody that's in the market for a new mower or that might be soon. But, but anyways, I broke it out for that and I'm like, man, I haven't given this old girl any love in a while. And in fact, it has not been started in that time, two or three years. So that's the first thing I wanna do. I don't even know if it has any gas in it, maybe a little bit. Let's just see if it'll even start. Oh yeah, there's a little gas in there. Can you see that moving down in there? Now keep in mind, I only use non-ethanol fuel, so that's all this has ever run on. We'll see if that uh, myth about that non-ethanol fuel not gumming up or whatever is true. And actually, I think even non-ethanol can gather water and all that, but I, I don't wanna get into that. I'm not a chemist, but <laughs> anyway, let's just see.
How about that, huh? I guess I should check the oil. You're probably not supposed to check the oil after you run it, right? But I just want to make sure it has oil in it. That's really what it, my main concern is right now. Looks like it might be a little low. It's supposed to be in between those two dots. Let's check it again. Yeah, I'm gonna add a little. Actually, before I add the oil, one thing I need to do 100% for sure is sharpen the blade. Hey, real, real quick, can you see those flip flops right there? You see those? I know you guys get annoyed with that accent, but you see those flip flops right there? Yeah, that's how you know that this video is not sponsored. No, oh, actually, it's not too bad. Ooh, a couple nicks in there. Can you see that? Ooh. <laughs> I have no idea what I used this for last. By the way, you see why the smart stow is so good? You don't need any kind of prop or nothing. You just pull it up in the smart stow position over by there. You could take that blade right off of there. Rut row, of course, if you're smart, you uh, you tighten up the uh, top of the oil thing there before you tip it upside down. I guess it's a good thing there wasn't too much oil in there, huh? Always a positive to everything, my friends. I just gotta hide this from my wife or this will turn into a major negative. I don't know if this feature's still on the newer ones. I hope it is. Because this one's a little older, but I forgot I really like the adjustment on this to adjust the handle. You know, because some people like the handle to come up to here, which on me is like chest height because I'm short, so it's too much. So if you want to adjust the rake, I guess that's the term. If you want to adjust the rake of the handle, it's really easy. It's just right there. See, you just pop that off, pop that. Put it down to the next one. Boom. And now I got the rake further back where it's more comfortable for short guy. Right up my belly. I like it at my belly. Oh yeah, I had I pulled the spark plug too when I sharpened the blade. I did. I promise. Okay, now we're good. Due to the sheer number of lawnmowers that I have and the amount of square footage that I've been mowing here lately with my project lawns and all that, I've had to get some larger gas cans. And with that, it makes it harder to pour into some of these smaller ones. So I got this cool little siphon device I forgot to show you. A lot of folks use these in the boating community. That's where I heard about this from. Actually from a channel called Zoffingers. He's a kayak fisherman here off of Tampa Bay, like not far from here. And he used one of these to fill his boat. And I was like, wow, this is a pretty cool little device to keep your hands clean when you're filling your moas. So watch what happens when you shake this up and down it creates a siphon now i'm hoping it's not going to spill i really need to be down there holding this but we'll see what happens see look at that see the gas coming through it's really a little bit too long for this i need to back up some There it goes, now it's flowing. Whoa, it's gonna go too fast. Oh boy. Oh shit. Okay. All right, well, it sure does feel awful, <laughs> awful quick. Uh, oh man, all right. Oh yeah, I like the smell of gasoline, but jeez. Definitely my wife's gonna be upset now. Oh gosh. Honey, why does it smell like gasoline in the garage? Well, honey, I got me a lot of lawnmowers in there. Oh yeah, that's bad. All right, so really what I should have done, but I wanted to just show that is I should have used it to fill this here and then use this to fill the small mower, but you know. I'm the lawn care nut, not the lawn care smart guy, okay? Also, pro tip, the uh, the incense, that will hide the smell of gasoline in your garage. I got the Nag Chomp Tree of Life here. Works pretty good over by there. Or the Golden Sandalwood. 
Another favorite. So that's your tip of the day right there. Now let's go enjoy the mo. I had forgotten how enjoyable it is to mow with this thing. And this is the recycler, this isn't the super recycler. So I think these retail for 300 some. By the way, that dead spot right there, that's actually the cable company had to come in and rerun my cable line because some stupid YouTube lawn guy was planting some palms over there and he cut the cable line. Anyway, I wanted to show you one or two things that I really remember liking about this that I wish were on the super recycler. The first is there's no mulch plug in here. It's automatic. If you want to go to bag, you just push that and then you can put the bag on, which I no longer have the bag. But if you want to go to mulch, you just bam. And then there's like a mulch plug in there. By the way, this is an old hookup for a striper, which I don't have here. I got to find it. But anyway, I just thought that was cool. No extra mulch plug. Because that's one of the things that annoys me about, well, the super recycler, I guess, is that it's got that extra mulch plug in it. So it's just another thing that could be lost. And the other thing that's cool is with the height adjustments, you can see I have it on the second to the highest right now, which should be somewhere just south of four inches. But you actually, the way that they have this set up here, you can actually get in between increments. So you can see I have it on one of the positive stops there. But if you wanted to go an in between, you could just pop it up like that. And you're now at an in between stop, like an extra, I don't know what, quarter of an inch. Now I know there's a joke there somewhere, but either way, it is nice to have those extra stops. Kind of like uh, me when my normal waist size should be 34, but I find some pantalones that actually come into 35. I'm all in. Also, I just figured I would let you know, none of this is sponsored. I do it purely for love. One thing I wanted to do now that some of the gas went down, <laughs> I wanna put a little of this motor treatment in here. You guys know me, I don't know anything about this type of chemistry, gasoline, any of that stuff, but I, I met these guys, they were at GIE, they're real nice guys and I like them and they sent me some of this stuff, so. I'll put a little of that in there. A couple two tree drops. It's like a little flask of goodness. You know, just in case there's any gunk or buildup in this thing after it's been sitting for so long, apparently. That'll help clean it out, especially in the carb. By the way, can you see how green that is? <laughs> That's from that Scott's Furt that I put down. I think it's been a couple weeks now. I wouldn't recommend them for every single app, especially those of you that follow my programs. We're doing like six or seven apps a year, but uh, every once in a while, why not, right? Hey, thanks for watching uh, this far through. Uh, the rest of this video is just kind of a quick update on the two project lawns I'm doing over by my church, over by Bradenton, and um, that'll be about it. Hey, what's up, y'all? All right, well, it is uh, Monday morning. I've actually gotten my first haircut in months. I know a lot of people are going to be talking about that. Um, and it's actually rainy, raining. A lot of clouds up over by there. So I was going to mow the project lawns today, but I'm not going to be able to do that. But I, and I was going to provide like a full update, this and this and that. But this one behind me here, this is actually Project Bermuda. You guys haven't seen any of this yet. I'm kind of going to put a full video together for the whole thing. Some One of the things that happens when I do videos oftentimes is I show you things along the way and people don't see some of the videos so they're like well where's the after shots how come you didn't show us after and it's like the way I used to film videos was everything was a story and anyway things will get buried so for this project part here I'm going to kind of do one full long video showing all of the steps you know all the way through the end I think you get what I'm saying but uh, we do have some nuts edge coming in here this is yellow nuts edge I did put a pre-emergent down here, but prodiamine doesn't work on nuts edge, FYI. Um, so I will have to do a weed spray here, but the color's looking good. And then here's a spot right here. That right there is from a spillage. So yeah, lots of stuff to come there, but the color is finally looking good here. This has been scalped, fertilized, the whole nine yards. I actually scalped it myself, believe it or not. So anyway, a lot more to come on this. I was hoping to get to enjoy the mow here today, but that did not happen. And then here is Project Lawn Zoysia. So the color here is coming along 
fairly nicely and um, I'm kind of slow playing this one in but it's coming along and looking better. I got a couple two tree weeds in here, not too bad. I put pennant magnum down here about two weeks ago. Finally got it to start growing too. It just wasn't growing. It was just like in this state of just brr, but really it's just because it's just been trampled for so many years. This is the first time now for, in however long, there haven't been services here in, I don't know, six or eight weeks or whatever. And so it's given the, <laughs> the zoysia a chance to kind of uh, relax a little bit. Now it's finally starting to grow and come along and. This is where all that fairy ring was. You can still see a little trace of it in here, but it's not near as bad as it was and the color's starting to even out overall. I am gonna do a fungicide here because it is zoysia. And see like some of this here, this looks to me like it could be some brown patch starting to work its way in a little bit. Kind of hard to tell because this is cut just so short, but I can tell you if you have zoysia, you should be doing a fungicide anyway in the spring. It's just one of those things when you have zoysia, you do fungicides. And I am running up on my furt bands. That's the whole thing. My furt bands are in 13 days. We have fertilizer bands, no NPK fertilizers here in this county. And it's in a lot of counties in Florida, but it is certainly here in Manatee County. No NPK fertilizers from June 1st until September 30th. 30 days have September, September 3rd, September 30th. I need to go ahead and kick this thing in the face one more time with some green punch. And then from there, we're gonna go to all micros. So there you go, y'all. Thank you so much for watching this video. Sorry it wasn't like laden with tips like normal, but I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got a little something out of it. And don't forget Thursday night, possibly Friday morning, but definitely, hopefully Thursday night, big announcement. I, I'm really excited about this. It's something that I'm just really excited to introduce into the lawn care community. And I really think it's gonna be a game changer to use that term for a lot of y'all. So with that, thanks a lot for watching. Hope this video has been helpful to you and I'll see you in the lawn.